Hello, today I'm going to be addressing a couple of questions that people have been sending in to me in response to the interviews I've been doing recently while I have spoken to people who've been speaking about the most amazing spiritual psychic experiences that they had in their lives. But with that, we may have not all had experiences which have blown us away, but we may have had just thoughts and feelings and attractions towards psychic things. There's much more on TV now than there ever was. You can always find things on YouTube. There's films and series like Ghost Adventures and Most Haunted. One, a subject that wasn't spoken much about before is now spoken much more openly. There's more books you can get, more tapes you can get, there's more talks you can go to. But, you know, there's always a question, isn't there? and when we have those questions, where do we go? Who do we ask? So one of the questions that came to me from a lady who sent this in, and she said, what is the point of being psychic? The thing is, what we need to understand is that being psychic is intuition and intuition is like an inbuilt warning signal that helps you to feel when something isn't quite right or when something feels good or feels right it's that knowing about something that feeling within your gut within your heart that pulls you towards something or is it a feeling which pushes you away you know that feeling you get when you walk into a room at uh, someone's house and it just feels really uncomfortable you want to get out that's your intuition which is sensing that energy that's left behind in that room whether it be from someone's arguments or maybe some past residual negative energy and also on the flip side of the coin there's also that energy we feel uh, intuitively about a place you may go into a new home and think wow this just feels so peaceful it's like this home is just hugging me i'm sure you've had that feeling before as well so how does it help us what is the purpose the purpose really is to help you to discern whether something is right for you or not so it doesn't mean that because you feel differently about something to your friend, it doesn't mean that you're wrong. You are really tapping in to that communication system within your own psyche that is often reflecting back to old memories of past experiences. And it is sending a message back to you and saying, this doesn't feel good. Okay, now some people have a very enhanced awareness of their intuition. Many of us, what we've done in life is attuned that, practiced it, developed it, worked with it. So it's not just a random feeling or message that comes and goes, but it's something that becomes more refined and that we are conscious of it when it sometimes feels like something is just tapping you on the shoulder and saying, hey, look out, this is not a good situation. You know, back off now. Many times what we do, we override it with our own stubbornness, sometimes with our analytical thoughts that just say, you know what, if that person is smiling at me, then they must be okay. Where in your heart and in your gut, it's saying, uh-uh, there's something else this person is projecting in their energy field, which is telling you, get away now because all is not what it seems so there's something very powerful about that and i think that the, the more we listen to it the more we trust it then our lives will become much easier and more peaceful so think about it in this way you know that nowadays we have cars that have an inbuilt sensors so when you're reversing if you're getting near to a wall or a garage door or, or an obstruction or an obstacle it beeps at you doesn't it to let you know it's an alarm system if you just avoided it if you just said no i'm not going to hear it you know that's just in my mind and kept going you would hit something then there would be a bump and then there'd be damage and then you'd be kicking yourself and thinking if only i listened to that alarm system that was there to help me so I see the psychic and the intuition in that way, that it's something that is there. We can choose to listen to it or you can choose to ignore it. But if you ignore it, you'll look back and think, if only, if only I'd listened to that feeling I had about that thing and about that person, I wouldn't be in this situation now. So the lesson in that is trust your intuition. 
intuition is usually seen as the first feeling about something rather than the thought about something. So remember that it's the first feeling. The feeling may say, just step back and get away. But the thought in your head might say, you know you are, don't be so stupid. Everyone else is happy. You go and do what you have to do. You know, everyone will notice if you're being different, but listen to the feeling that's right there in your gut that's telling you what is right and what is wrong for you as an individual. See it as your friend, see it as a gift. So yes, there is a wonderful energy that comes with that and there is a purpose. It's there to guide you and help you. But also remember too, to protect your energy system. You see, we're so sensitive in life, aren't we? we? We find that we are affected very much by how other people are. We're affected by their emotions, their fears, their anxieties. You can get to that point where you're almost fearful of who you're going to meet when you go out. Is the person you meet or you talk to going to be happy and upbeat? In which case you'll be happy and upbeat or will it be, oh God, everything's awful, oh dear, it's getting worse, isn't it? And then you start to feel down as well. So I tend to avoid those people and I am drawn towards the people who tend to be, to be much more uplifting to be around. That also protects your energy because you want your energy to be kept as peaceful as possible. You can choose who and what you invite to be close to you, but trust your intuition. Okay, so another question that came up as well is if someone is starting out on their journey um, in terms of a spiritual journey, what is the first steps to practice in? So if you're starting out in your journey, that could be that you're really drawn towards learning about healing. You're mainly drawn to seeing if your psychic intuitive gift can be used in a, a way where it can help other people. Um, so you might be really drawn towards cards, tarot cards, uh, picture cards, the, uh, to maybe to the runes or to doing dowsing with a pendulum. Maybe you're drawn towards astrology. Maybe you're drawn towards a therapy. I think, again, you've got to trust your heart in terms of what's practical and what's relevant to you. But normally when we are in service to others, then you will find that your life becomes more peaceful and more fulfilled because it's actually healing to you as you're giving healing to others. So where do we start? One of the things you can do at home, because we all have busy lives, and one of the things I find when I speak to clients is that they often say they spend very little time doing things for themselves. They're doing everything for, you know, their family, their children, their next door neighbours, their parents, the people over the road, here, there and everywhere. And then when they get to the point in the evening, they just crash. They've got no time for themselves. And there is an aspect of that where it feels they're not worthy of having that time for themselves or sometimes can feel guilty about stopping or sitting down or feel guilty about uh, doing something they really enjoy. Now that can be just belief systems, it can be the way their life has taken them, but it's important we bring something into our lives which is creative and allows you to be yourself. So look at it in this way. If you are doing something that inspires you, it is being in spirit. Okay, inspired, being in spirit, which means you are connecting to the real essence of who you are. We are just a spiritual being in a human body, having a human experience. So when you are inspired in whatever that means to you, whether it's walking the dog, whether it is drawing, painting, gardening, whether it is meditating, whether it is singing, um, whatever it is that you find inspiring, if you even did it for a quarter of an hour in the day, half an hour a day, if you just set aside that time, just think about how fulfilling that would be for you to say, this is me. I have this free will, this choice to do something which I really enjoy without having to justify it to anyone. That is incredibly powerful. So when you want to make a start in this journey, there's certainly books you can uh, go onto Amazon and find. I think one of the best books I find really helped me in terms of healing myself and healing work. So Louise L. Hay, You Can Heal Your Life was a great book to read. I used to listen, uh, watch a lot of Wayne Dyer. I used to love listening to his teachings. I still do. But you'll find there are so many teachers out there, so many books you can read. 
follow your intuition. <laughs> I found as well that it has to resonate with where you are right now. And you can often, you know, it's like reading the same book, you know, maybe three times, but in a year apart, each time you read it, you get something different from it. And that's the thing, you know, you are relating to aspects of that message within the book in relation to what you're going through in your own life. So my discussion today was to answer those questions that have come to me. I'm sure if you've got questions, feel free to send them in and I'll put them down as something which I will address and talk about if it's possible and I can share with you. I'll be happy to do that. Please subscribe to this uh, YouTube channel, uh, like this video. I will do plenty more of them for your interest and for your enjoyment. In the meantime, have a wonderful day. Thank you very much. Thank you.